Hello and welcome to this video about the speed of light and how it compares to the size of the universe. Have you ever wondered how fast light travels? Or how slow it seems when we look at the vastness of space? In this video, we will explore the amazing properties of light and take a hypothetical journey across the cosmos in a spacecraft that can travel at different multiples of the speed of light. Are you ready? Let's go! Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation, which means it is composed of tiny particles called photons that carry energy and travel in waves. However, light is not like any other wave or particle. It can behave as both depending on how it is observed and measured. This is known as the wave-particle duality of light. For example, when light passes through a narrow slit, it creates a pattern of bright and dark bands on a screen, which shows its wave nature. But when light hits a metal surface, it can knock off electrons from the metal, which shows its particle nature. The wavelength of light determines its category and color. For example, visible light, which is what we can see with our eyes, is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum that also includes gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. The colors of visible light range from red, which has the longest wavelength, to violet, which has the shortest wavelength. There are also more colors than just the seven we see in a rainbow. In fact, magenta is not even a real color on the spectrum. It is a combination of red and violet. The speed of light is a constant that is exactly 670 million, 616,629 miles per hour, or 299 million, 792,458 meters per second in a vacuum. This is believed to be the fastest speed in the universe, and nothing can travel faster than it. However, in other media, such as air or water, light travels slower than its maximum speed. This means that light can be refracted or bent when it passes from one medium to another. For example, when you put a straw in a glass of water, it looks like it is broken or bent at the surface of the water. This is because light changes its direction and speed when it goes from air to water. To put the speed of light into perspective, let's imagine we have a spacecraft that can travel at different multiples of the speed of light. We will call it the EMRC, short for electromagnetic radiation, and C which is commonly used to represent the speed of light. We will start our journey on Earth and then visit different places in the universe that are related to light. First, let's do a quick flight around the Earth at the speed of light to make sure our systems are working correctly. That was very fast. It only took us 0.134 seconds to complete one orbit. That's like going from New York to Los Angeles and back 14 times in a blink of an eye. Now let's head to our closest star, the Sun. The Sun is the source of most of the light and heat we receive on Earth. It is about 93 million miles away from us, which means it takes light about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us from the Sun. So if we travel at the speed of light, it will take us the same time to get there. Next. Let's go to Neptune, which is the farthest planet from the Sun in our solar system. Neptune is about 2.8 billion miles away from the Sun, so this will take longer than going to the Sun. In fact, it took us over four hours to reach Neptune's orbit at the speed of light. That's how big our solar system is, and we thought traffic jams on Earth were bad. Now let's leave our solar system and go to Proxima Centauri which is our nearest neighboring star after the Sun. Proxima Centauri is about 4.2 light years away from us, which means it takes light 4.2 years to travel that distance. So even if we travel at the speed of light, it will take us 4.2 years to get there. That's how vast interstellar space is. Can you guess how long it would take us to reach our next destination at the speed of light? 
Or how about at 100 times the speed of light? Or how about at 1 billion times the speed of light? Pause the video and write your answers in the comments below. I'll reveal the answers later in the video. Let's continue our journey and visit Sirius, which is the brightest star in our night sky, other than the sun. Sirius is about 8.6 light years away from us, so it will take us twice as long as going to Proxima Centauri at the speed of light. That's right, it took us 8 years and 8 months to reach Sirius at the speed of light. But we're not done yet. Let's go to Rigel, which is one of the brightest stars in Orion constellation. Rigel is about 860 light years away from us, so traveling at the speed of light won't cut it anymore. Let's switch our engines and go at 100 times the speed of light. That should make things faster, right? Well, not really. It still took us 8 years and nearly 8 months to reach Rigel at 100 times the speed of light. And we're still not even close to leaving our own galaxy. That's right, we're still inside our home galaxy, the Milky Way. It's a spiral galaxy that contains about 200 billion stars and has a diameter of about 100,000 light years. So let's go to the edge of our galaxy and see what lies beyond. We'll need to switch our engines again and go at 10,000 times the speed of light. And here we are, the edge of our galaxy. It took us two and a half years to travel here at 10,000 times the speed of light. And that was only about one quarter of the distance across the entire Milky Way. But wait, there's more. The Milky Way is not alone in this universe. It is part of a group of galaxies called the Local Group that contains about 50 other galaxies within a radius of about 10 million light years. And beyond that, there are billions more galaxies and clusters and superclusters that form the large scale structure of the universe. So, Let's see how slow the speed of light really is by traveling around the entire observable universe in a circle. The observable universe is the part of the universe that we can see or detect with our current technology. It has a radius of about 46 billion light years because space expands over time, which means it has a circumference of about 290 billion light years. To do this trip in a reasonable amount of time, if you can call it that, We'll need to switch our engines one last time and go at 1 billion times the speed of light. That's over 186 trillion miles per hour. That's faster than a speeding bullet, a rocket, or even Superman. Are you still there? I hope you brought some snacks and entertainment because this trip took us nearly 300 years. Yes, you heard me right. 300 years and we were traveling at 1 billion times the speed of light. Remember how we flew around Earth in less than one eighth of a second at the speed of light? Well, it would take us over 2 trillion seconds, or over 63,000 years, to fly around Earth at 1 billionth of that speed. And remember that a snail could travel around the orbit of Neptune over 3,000 times before light could travel around the observable universe once. Well, that snail would have to live for over 900,000 years to do that. So, what does this all mean? It means that either the speed of light is extremely slow or the universe is extremely large, or maybe both. Thank you for watching this video about the speed of light and how it compares to the size of the universe. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. See you next time.